In this session, I want to focus on giving you guys as much information as possible about how population deviates from solver in most nodes. You guys know that I provide a lot of theoretical understanding in most of my videos, and I always talk about how it is important to understand theory, but it's also very important to understand how population deviates from solver and in what ways we can exploit them to maximize our EV. So this play and explain session will be focused on exactly that, providing you guys with an understanding of where people are leaking and how you can extract EV from those leaks. So we're playing here two tables of 500 zone and one table of 200 zone. This should hopefully give us enough action to discuss a bunch of very interesting different topics. Today is Friday and the pool is pretty good at the moment. We have 24 players at 500 zone and 39 players at 200 zone. So hopefully we're gonna get into some nice spots and discuss a lot of things. So first hand here, Ace King off. This is a spot where population still overfolds a little bit to four bet. So I like to place four bets here with Ace King because Ace King is a hand that does benefit from your opponent over folding. It is a hand that if you can make someone fold a hand like pocket nines here, that's a really, really amazing result for Ace King. So I think people are still over folding a little bit here and I like to shift Ace King, which would be a mixed strategy in most GTO Wizard teams, I believe. We can shift it towards a pure four bet. On this flop, I'm going to start with a quarter pot size bet. What we see from the data is that people still have difficulty check raising sufficiently for bad pots. It's really hard to play for bad pots as the caller that position player has developed quite a ton of check raises. And therefore, if population is not going to be check raising sufficiently, you should in fact increase your double barrel frequency, your c bat frequency, I'm sorry. Now on the turn, I'm going to go ahead and continue firing with my hand. I think you could also check with this hand, it's totally no problem, but I wanna put pressure to the region of hands like pocket eights, pocket nines, perhaps some ace highs that are gonna float here with. I think it's going to be a nice play. As play, we have a decision here. Do we wanna jam with our ace king here? Try to get called by some king jack, king ten of hearts, or do you wanna check because maybe villain gets here with too many queen axes? Honestly, I'm not sure. Ah, fuck, I was gonna jam, yeah. I was gonna jam that. Next hand here, we got another ace king. MP here opened for two and a half X. We're gonna three bat that, of course. Let's see if he decides to call. So MP tanked, 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 and four bat. So this is not the theme of the video, but you guys already saw my, my video on timing tells. This is gonna be a timing tell here that we're gonna exploit and we're just gonna ship this pre-flop. And uh, this is gonna be a significant tell on zone games because in zone games, time is crucial. We don't have much time to act. So whatever time information we can have on our opponents here is going to be decent information. This time he showed up with pocket queens, but we got it. On the other hand here, we got ace, eight of hearts, button versus big blind. We got this queen, ten, eight, two-tone texture. We're gonna start with a check here with our bottom pair. Perhaps we could maybe place a small bet sometimes, but I figured this texture mostly wants two-thirds or check. On the turn, we can squeeze here some small bets against a capped range. So this is a spot where population is not going to slow play sufficiently as the out of position player. And we want to exploit that with more bluffs and more thin value bats here as the in position player. So that's what I recommend you to do here. Just the lacy bet more often in a node where people are not going to be slow playing sufficiently with the top of their range. We open king queen off here from the small blind and get three bad by the big blind. We can play some four bets with this hand. It plays very well as a four bat and we can take it from there. I actually shoot four bat bigger here, I think. I didn't realize that we were a little bit deeper, but anyways, let's take it from there. On the flop here with these blockers, I'm gonna check on this low texture. I'm gonna be heavily blocking his folding range. As far as how people play for bat pots, I know that most people are still not meeting the required raising frequency IP. It's something that most people do that they just focus mostly on calling and perhaps playing as zero frequency raises. And as played, I just have to check fold. So in four bat pots, you can increase your C bat frequency just due to how population tends to not raise enough, rather whether they are IP or out of position. With pocket fives here, we can mix color folds with this hand. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and call here and take it from there. This so is definitely going to be a regular, playing the 6.5 3 bat size preflop. It's a very good texture for him, we should just go ahead and see bat range. 
and he does so with a very tiny sizing. Here we can make razor calls with this hand, I believe. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a raise here, to be honest. I feel like this hand doesn't play very well as a call. Of course, Sauber's gonna make some calls, but what I've seen from Population lately is that they're really good at being aggressive in this node in terms of c-betting the flop and then c-betting turns and rivers. So I'm gonna shift a little bit of the calling hands towards more raises, thinking that Population's gonna be very comfortable playing the double barrel and the triple barrel nodes. So I want to make their lives a little bit more difficult by playing the check raise node. On the left here, we have have 8-6 suited against a small bat. It seems to be a regular even though it is a short stack because of the flop sizing. I'm gonna start with a check raise here. I think this hand is going to be indifferent between raising or calling. Once our opponent calls, I don't think there are many deviations that population makes that would make us want to shift this hand relative to equilibrium. So just executing something you feel is reasonable in theory is totally fine here in my opinion. I should have actually gone with a slightly bigger size, something like pot, but totally fine to bet three quarters as well. I three bet the ace king suited here's my blind versus pot and my opponent quickly called. On this flop I can go either half pot or small bet. I'm gonna go small bet this time but if you want to go half pot I think that's totally decent as well. My opponent floats and at this point we're just going to execute very obvious strategy here just bet three quarter turn shove river. The way Population plays this node is that they're still slightly over folding turns and rivers, so this decreases a little bit our EV of fast playing, and they do give us some additional EV when we check, where they might stab a little bit more than Solver and then over Bluff River, but I still think that triple barreling is probably the preferred action, particularly the hand as strong as this. King of Clubs is not the greatest, I'm losing to Flushes, but I still think I have to jam here. Still gonna get called by plenty of worse hands. I think that's fine. And we did get called by, let's see, King Queen. King Queen off, so pretty straightforward. King 5 suited here. We defend big blind versus hijack open. He starts with a half pot bet on this flop at RNG 85. I'm gonna call here. I don't think people play in a way that you should shift these flush draws into pure calls or pure raises. Just mixing it up is good in my opinion. On the turn here, we have the opportunity to lead and I like leading here. Well, yeah, I like leading here. I like leading here because I have the intuition that people are still not raising the necessary amount versus leads. I, to be honest, did not confirm this with data, but it is my intuition and also based on everything that I've ever studied about data, that's what I would expect. As played, I'm just going to give up with this combo. If people are not raising enough, they're probably also getting to the river with the stronger range than they should. So I think it's a good idea to give up there. On the bottom here, I got pocket aces on 10, 9, 6 texture, big blind versus butt now 3 bat pot. I decided to check the flop. I think these boards are going to require some checking frequency out of the big blind, and ace is a hand that plays very well in that regard. On the turn, I'm going to slow play again my pocket aces here. This is a node where people are significantly overfolding to the delay c bet. So I want to focus more on betting some hands for protection and also some bluffing hands. Aces that doesn't need protection, I'm very comfortable with checking with the intention of check raising and jamming the river. I think that's a very, very good play here with pocket aces. Villain stabbed small and now he's tanking. Let's see what he does. He calls. River is the ace of clubs. Oh, that's sick. That's pretty sick. I'm losing to flushes. I'm beating pocket fours. I'm going to stick it in. Perhaps the correct place to block bet here. I'm honestly not sure what's the best play. Yeah, so we lost to a flush. Perhaps we should block bet. Perhaps we should check. Yeah, honestly, tough spot there. Tough spot. Another hand here, we got 8-7 uh, hearts on 10-8-6. I'm gonna start with a check on this board. Betty would also have been fine, I believe, at least at some frequency. On the turn, our opponent leads for a pot size. We have pair, flush draw, and straight draw. We're quite strong in terms of equity here. We're gonna call and river, we make our flush. But what we're gonna observe from population tendencies is that this check and then bet, bet line is generally over bluffed, but it's heavily dependent on what the sizing what was the sizing used on the turn? Generally, the smaller the size used on the turn, the higher the over bluff frequency on the river. As played here, we have to raise with our flush, I think. And he folds. We've got pocket jacks here, button versus big blind, and we got this ace queen deuce texture. This is a texture where you should go big bet or check, primarily over bets. 
and it is my intuition that people over call in these spots so if you take a look at solvers you see that villain is supposed to pure fold a lot of the queen axes on the flop to a large bet and even some ace x might start to reach indifference right there on the flop against some over bet sizes so it is my intuition that people will over call in these spots so my adjustment here would be to be a little bit more linear with my c bet range perhaps the absolute bottom of the range i would check more often and on the top of the range, I would shift a little bit more towards betting, particularly with hands like Ace, 10, Ace, Jack, that might already be a mixed strategy at equilibrium. The pocket jacks, I'm gonna check twice here. Betting turn is close, but I think still a check. And then river, we want to overcall on this line here. So check bet, bet line is one of the most overbluffed lines of the game tree. So we wanna click the call button here with pretty much any decent bluff catcher and capture that money against population over bluffs. The thing about bluff catching is that whenever someone is over bluffing, it doesn't have to be by much to the point where you should be shifting most of your bluff catchers to pure call. So the correct strategy against someone over bluffing is to call most of your bluff catchers. Unless your bluff catcher is so bad, it has so poor blockers that even against someone over bluffing, and depending of course on the magnitude of the over bluff, you still don't want to make that call. But in most situations, we're going to want to massively over call. We're going to want to call most of our bluff catchers. And uh, this way we're going to capture a lot of money against these over bluffed lines. On the right here, I got king four suited against a small blind. So generally speaking, the small blind cold caller is gonna have very high probability of being a recreational player. This is just a very straightforward utilization of bias theorem. So regular is very rarely cold call from the small blind and fish is cold call quite a lot. So when you see a cold call from the small blind, you should be very inclined to assign very high probability of this profile being a recreational player. Now we're gonna bet the flop against our very wide range. I think that's pretty straightforward. In River, you want to call here, right? This is also something you can learn from MTA is that recreational players significantly overbluffed most lines of the game tree. And this one in particular is one major overbluffs line. So you want to call here every single time. If I just had a king, I would still call. If I had an ace, I would call. Okay, so you must call there against recreational players. They're going to have super wide ranges pre-flop. They're going to float pretty wide on the flop and they're going to bet all sorts of stupid hands on the river so you must call there on the river pocket aces here from the small blind we get three bet by the big blind to a very small size eight blinds we're gonna go ahead and four bet here also going small i think 19 blinds is sufficient here against the sizing he jams we call he's got pocket jacks and we don't take it fuck crap Ace deuce on the right here. I'm going to start with a three bet against a short stack opening three X from the hijack. So this is a very significant tail of a recreational player. Recreationals like to use the three X size pre-flop. Regulars almost never use the three X size. So I'm going to want a three bet here quite wide against recreational player. Playing three pots at a position, three pots in position against recreational player is one of the best things you can do for your win rate. So make sure you three bet them quite wide and you play post flop against them. Doesn't matter, oh, ace do suited, solver doesn't three bet that. Fuck solver, it's a recreational player. Play against it, you know, put hands in. Try to play as often as you can against a recreational player, particularly when you are in position. And thank me later. On the left here, I got a5 suited and my opponent called the big blind, ace jack six. I'm gonna start with the one blind bet here. It's a really effective bet on these ace xx rainbow textures where the big blind's range is so weak that you don't need to bet large to generate indifference in that range. So I think a blind here is a really effective size. You should use it against your opponents and it will absolutely get over folded, you know, so just go ahead and fire. We're playing ace eight up here, button versus big blind missing raised pot. The flop is queen jack 10. So this is a great texture for my range. I'm going to start off here with the three quarter sizing. I think any size is reasonable on this texture. Small size, three quarter size, over bet size. All of that make quite a lot of sense here. As played, I'm gonna use this hand as a bluff here on the turn. I think it plays quite well having a spade and a heart. So I block hands like 10 8 of hearts, queen 8 of hearts, some 8x of hearts that is probably gonna call still. I'm sorry, spades. And the ace of hearts is really good because it's not gonna be floating the flop with too many ace of hearts. So I got unblockers to his folding range. I got some equity and I got blockers to his continuing range. So it's a good hand to continue barely. As far as MTA and how population plays that spot, in the past they would overfold to those turn double barrels. Nowadays people play really close to theory, both fishes and regulars. 
so there's not much space to be super exploitative on those nodes. What you can do sometimes, in fact, is actually to shift some hands towards the most passive action because they will leak more when you check back than they will leak once you bet and they call or they fold. So I actually recommend you consider that option a lot of times because people are going to leak when they lead on the river after they call the turn and you check back. After they call the flop and they check back on the turn, they're going to leak when you raise them after they lead and they're going to leak when they check to you. So it's a really great spot to exploit population. So if you are in doubt between bluffing the bottom of your range or checking, perhaps checking is a decent option as well. 5D suited with a fan here, big blind against small blind. 10 10 9 to actually is actually one in which the small blind can stab a lot. I'm gonna start with a check here with these blockers. I think this hand probably does stab sometimes, but not super often. And let's see what villain does on the turn. He stabs. This is a node where if he were to check, I would exploit quite aggressively with stabs, both for protection and thin value because it's going to be a very capped range here that people are going to have where they just overflow to bats and don't raise enough. So I would bat quite aggressively had he checked. Now that he bat, we can call, of course, with the five. And now here we have two options. We can either call or raise. We should absolutely never fold in this line. I'm gonna call here, but raise it would also have been fine in my opinion. This is gonna be a very overbluffed line and you do not wanna fold there. We got pocket tens here, cut off for a small blind. So a short stack called calling from the small blind, definitely a recreational player. Then he leads on the flop. We're gonna call here and let's see if he takes a line that I really like exploiting them with, which is the triple dunk. Okay, he checks the turn. We're gonna check behind and we're gonna call any river so don't check donk 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 all those donk bet lines that recreationals take it's over bluffed on the river so you want to click the call button okay so you can click call and you're gonna have a very profitable call and uh make sure you don't fall to those donk bets uh recreational players queen 53 texture rng 84 i'm gonna go ahead and check behind so this is a node where Population used to overfold and underraise in the past, but nowadays regulars are very, very, very close to theory in these spots. So if Solver is mixing some checks here, you should probably do so, not only because of the flop, but also because you have some great exploitative opportunities on further streets. So if you check and people check the turn, you can delay C bet and capture a lot of overfolds. So if someone is playing, if people are playing very well on the flop, then you should funnel the game tree towards a node that they don't play as good. So that's why I checked that hand there. A7 of hearts here, big blind versus cutoff. Villa starts off with a 60% pop bat. This board is a bat bigger check on a board. I'm gonna start with the check raise here against the size. Not that I'm reading too much into the size, just that I think this hand plays well as a check raise. I'm gonna have uh, pocket eights, king, queen, queen, eight here. So it's definitely a tactic to where I can develop some check raises and the flush draws pretty really well in those sizes. So on the left here, my opponent tank checked on this 10 turn. I'm just going to go ahead and over bluff the river here. This is a massively overfolded line by population and uh, particularly on these runouts where they're checking a pretty capped range and we have an uncapped range. So I get here with king, nine, eight, nine, five X it's going to be super overfolded and you should turn any unreasonable hand into a bluff there. Pocket fours on the right. Our opponent checks to us. So this is big blind versus small blind in a single raised pot. It's a decent texture for the small blind. We might want to start stabbing sometimes with these very, very low pairs. I'm going to start with a check though and see what he does on the turn. He's tanking a little bit. He tanked a little bit on then over bat. Had he bet small, I would consider raising with his hand first because I think theory might raise sometimes and that also because of the tanking uh, facing an over bet, I have to fold. So with pocket aces here, I limped on the hijack and I got a raise and a collar. So this is a strategy that I really recommend you play with the top fear range from these positions. The reason being that people are going to isolate way too light and this is going to give you way more EV than if you would just open raise with those hands. Of course, it's exploitable if your opponents figure out that you're only doing this with premiums, but most people are not going to know. First of all, this is an anonymous game and people are not going to know. In non-anonymous games with games with screen names, a lot of people are not going to understand what you're doing. Maybe some people don't know who you are, they don't know that you're a regular. And primarily, you want to do this when you have recreationals to your left. Because recreationals, they, they don't know they're not going to be able to exploit you. So if you have recreationals to your left, make sure you limp with your strongest hands 
and you see that it's gonna be much more profitable than open raising. 10-9 suited here, we're playing hijack versus big blind. Two-tone low text here, we're gonna play big bet or check. And with the low QQ here, we're gonna check decent amount with his hand. Turn is really good for that position player, but he did not overbat. That's interesting when villain does not overbat. We're gonna keep that in mind. I'm gonna call here on the turn, of course, top pair, and he quickly checks on the river. So a quick check on the river here to me is very, very capped range. I'm gonna want to exploit this very capped range by sizing up my strongest hands. I don't think people are going to quickly check here with their flushes. So this is a spot where I can exploit population with some bigger bats with hands that I would usually bat smaller with. On the last here, I got pocket aces and I squeezed a MP open button call. Hmm. If the button is a recreational player, I like checking here. And since most people that cold call the button are going to be recreational players and people that call a squeeze are going to be recreational players, I'm going to go ahead and check here and let him blast off. This is one of the greatest lines you can exploit recreationals with that is backed up by data. So make sure you, if you're in a three bat pot against recreational, check your strongest hands to them on the turn. Just do that. Do that and thank me later. Check your strongest hands against recreational players on the turn and thank me later. All right, here I got pocket nines. I'm playing against a recreational that opened 3x on the button. He was a little bit short stack, so I three bet to, I three bet 11 blinds. I actually should have three bets a bit smaller. I'm gonna bet small on the flop and take it from there. He clicked me and now he's going to blast off and I'm going to call down. This is also a line you wanna exploit recreational players with. If they click you on the flop, you want to call them down, okay? So don't be afraid. This is backed up by data. They're gonna have a, approximately 40 something percent plus in this line. Yes, of course, you will lose about 60 or 55, 57% of the time but this is more than enough. You're gonna win more than enough for it to be profitable, okay? So I'm gonna click this call button here and I'm gonna win about 43% of the time. That's more than enough for this to be extremely profitable, okay? This time he had a 10, unfortunately, but this is a very overbluffed line. You want to click the call button there every single time, okay? On the left here with ace4 off, we're gonna start with the large bet on this flop. It's a really good flop for using large bets. Jack 10x to tone. Villain tank, 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 and raises. Mm, what do we make of a tank raise in this spot? That's interesting. I'm gonna fold. I'm gonna fold. I think the tank raise is more indicative of a strongish hand than of a weaker hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold. All right, this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did enjoy this video, I would imagine you're going to enjoy this video I separated for you right here. See you there.